This brings us to the end of the program where we have external speakers. And uh, the last speaker today uh, is Case. Case will share his thoughts. And uh, let me just say, Case, floor is yours. Thank you. And um, as always, I'm always humbled when the science uh, speaks for itself. So I, I was really um, glad to see all these uh, speakers present their results. And it's pretty impressive that over the last couple of years, there was so much more and, and a body of evidence uh, coming from the scientific world. Um, especially when you think back when we started Protex 11 years ago, it's a, it's a huge difference and uh, uh, pretty impressive. Um, it's my job to add the past, present and future about Protex. I'll give you a short uh, presentation about what we do. Um, and I'll start with the commitment to the SDGs. Uh, we're really committed to bring the food system back in balance with nature. And for us, that means that there is a lower need for fishing for feed. There would be more land available for biodiversity and therefore less land for food production um, and all enabled by circular nutrition for all. And we've seen today that insects can really deliver a whole range of opportunities for feeds and applications on the animal side, but also on the plant-based side. And that is our vision to truly come up with a platform of nutrition that can be served in the feeds of pet foods, the feeds for fish, free feeds for livestock, and also human applications. And we heard a lot of that today. Um, and I expect a lot of more science coming up in the next couple of years. The nice thing about insects as uh, the role they also play in nature is that the residue, the insect frass, is a very important ingredient as well for the uh, root nutrient interaction. And therefore we can also serve the plant side of the food system. And as mentioned uh, by the speakers today, there's so many opportunities that are now envisageable with this platform of nutrition. Uh, whether you're in the uh, broiler space, the egg space, the shrimp, the pet foods, the fish, or even the human uh, food side, there are whole kinds of new supply chains that can be built. So when you think about where do the ingredients come from, can they be made more sustainable, or can there be uh, more health benefits emerging, we're here to help and we would really love to serve you. But as always, um, there's a, a triple P needed to, to serve the triple P. Um, the nice PowerPoints uh, uh, can always easily be made, but how do you get through the pilot all the way into the production of these uh, basic new ingredients? Now that I'm gonna quickly show you what happened over the last couple of years, because over um, in bergen op Zoom, they're working actually today to produce the large volumes of insect-based proteins, lipids, hydrolysates, purees, and soil ingredients. And we have everything under one roof. Uh, we can take in truckloads of feedstock. Um, we bring them into the facility where we have the breeding facility to produce the eggs, to grow the larvae at scale, and then to process them hygienically safe into protein meals and lipids that we can deliver to customer. And that is our um, contribution to the food system. And to answer to the question by Sergey, um, yes, we made indeed a whole range of um, improvements already. Among other, we transitioned to solar energy and 100% green energy. And that allowed us to, aside the nutritional arguments that we, of which we've heard a lot today, um, to further reduce the footprint of what we produce. So not only is the direct ingredient we produce with a very, very low carbon footprint, land and water footprint, but in a consequential life cycle assessment that we did among other with uh, Deutsche Institute and ETH Zurich, we can save up to four kilograms of CO2 for every kilogram of protein delivered. And that is a very big impact. And that is the impact we are working for every day uh, and supporting all our partners and network partners to bring forward the science to prove all of this. So we're very happy to have had this webinar today. I'm only gonna keep it short because the science um, was leading and I'm very, very grateful for Laura Gasco, Laura Starr, Sergey, Jack and Aman to, to take the time to present the results. And I'm looking forward to another decade of 
strong collaboration uh, based on science. So thanks all. Um, thanks for your time. And I hope we're going to be, uh, be in a lot of touch, a lot of uh, connections in the coming period, even though it's a bit harder uh, physically uh, due to circumstances. But let's uh, use the digital means and methods um, uh, to connect uh, so we can serve you wherever possible. So I'm going to give it back to the person who started it and who's, um, who's going to end it. So Elselina, back to you. And thanks all for your presence today. Yes, with this, we come to the end of our first speakers for your contribution today. We highly appreciate it. Thank you also attendees. Uh, it was a pleasure having you all here. Um, thanks for uh, sticking with us on the Friday afternoon. Uh, I see still more than 300 people are on. So that's really impressive. Um, I see a lot of activity in the chat. Um, please know we collect all the unanswered questions and we get back to you after the webinar. Uh, we're gonna have a look at in what form and where we're gonna do this, but keep a close eye on our uh, social channels, uh, LinkedIn and the website. Um, and actually, I hope to see you all again in the next webinar in the future. For now, have a great weekend. Thank you.